we are going to move forward here uh, to the next project, uh, which is a code camp for girls. Uh, and this was our largest project in terms of number of members involved. So this was Cass, Christina, Greg, Pierre, and Virginia. So take it away. All right. Hi, everyone. So like Joel said, our project was a coding camp for girls. It was five days long. My name is Virginia Lopez Nadal. My pronouns are she, her, and my site is Project for Pride and Living. I'll pass it off for everybody to introduce themselves. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for coming for our, our presentation. Um, my name is Castelvo. Um, my pronouns are they, them, theirs, um, and I am currently serving um, at the Maplewood branch of the Ramsey County Library System. So shout out to the Sharks. <laughs> Hi, my name's Christina, she, her, and I'm with Literacy Minnesota. Thank you. Hello, my name is uh, Gregory Romero, uh, he, him, and I serve at the Best Buy Teen Tech Center at Clues. Hi everyone, my name is Pierre Young. Uh, I go by he and him. I serve at the Metro State uh, University Library and this is also the school I go to. Uh, welcome to our presentation. All right, so how our project began was that Christina and I had proposed similar project ideas, both involving girls and coding. And so we just decided to work together and combine our ideas together. We ultimately choose to teach Scratch because it's a very user-friendly, beginner learner uh, coding language. Um, and it also beyond just teaching you coding, teaches you really great concepts that can go across multiple coding languages. So we originally planned for the camp to consist of a project contest where the winner would win a laptop. We later scratched that idea, which you'll see what we ended up doing in just a sec. And we were also considering doing it in person and virtual. Again, didn't really go it like that. We ended up just doing it 100% virtual, obviously, because of the COVID pandemic. And also towards the beginning of the project, we were kind of thinking about different timelines and structures for the project. Like if we wanted it to be consecutive days, we wanted it to be more spread out. And again, you'll see what we did. Sorry. Um, all right. So yeah, so what we ended up doing, um, and as you can see in the little image there, that's like a screen cap of like the sort of web page event um, posting. Um, but so as Virginia said, we did this, we ended up doing it completely virtual um, due to our community partners restrictions, which I'll get to in a minute. The camp itself was one week, um, five sort of weekdays in a row um, in July, and each day was um, a few hours. Um, each. And then, of course, we partnered with um, my lovely partner, um, specifically uh, the Teen Services Department at the Ramsey County Library. Shout out to my boss, Erica. Um, and so that was really great because they provided the huge bulk of our advertising. Um, so this like little uh, image here is from the, their website. They also shared it on their Facebook. Um, and we had these brochures um, during the summer here that were distributed through another program of ours. Um, and they also provided us with a substantial budget of about like $400, um, which we used to um, purchase these free coding books about Scratch, um, as well as Best Buy gift cards um, to act as um, rewards for every participant, as we ended up not wanting to judge um, the sort of girls like against each other. We wanted them to sort of build community. Um, and of course, the girls were... So, um, in grades eight to 12, though some of them um, ended up going a little bit younger than that. So yeah, basically every single day um, had a sort of same structure um, with each day covering like a different topic. So we would start with a women in STEM spotlight, um, which we'll get to uh, in a little bit like what that looked like, um, as well as like learning the coding skill of that day. Um, whether that was on day one where it was scratch basics with myself and Christina um, or uh, more advanced stuff um, such as Gregory's day, um, right? And then we would give them time to sort of develop their own ideas to practice the skills we were teaching them as well as work towards a final project, which was completely optional, um, but many of them did produce and you'll see that a little bit later. So the first day, the first half of the coding camp 
I um, touched very little on HTML and then connected that to Scratch and um, helped them learn how to set up their user account and then how to go in and went through the different coding blocks, explaining to them that the coding was in the blocks and also the different categories, tabs and backgrounds. And that was my part of the first half of Coding Camp. Yeah, so I was sort of the later half of that day, um, and I just sort of walked them through a specific project in Scratch that was really easy to do, um, which I have done through my site uh, myself to great success, which is a virtual e-card, um, right, that just sort of opens on its own. And how do you animate that? Um, and as you can see in the top left corner and the top right corner, those are actually projects that our girls made, and they were really cool and amazing to see. So on the second day, I uh, went in depth more with Scratch uh, using advanced coding, how to make a classic pong game like back in the 70s, uh, and encouraging the girls to uh, follow their dreams in game development. Uh, this is, and Scratch is a perfect uh, beginner uh, level to uh, learn uh, how to use Scratch. Um, I was happy to learn Scratch um, 10 years ago in the community uh, class, and, and this is what they came up with. And they, did like an easy mode, a hard mode of the game, and yeah, they had lots of fun. <clears throat> Hi, uh, I decided to do uh, a high-level presentation of um, web technologies like HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, and conceptually connect them to Scratch. Uh, yeah. Yes, and I went on the fourth day, Thursday, and my focus was a expanded woman in STEM spotlight. So each day I did start with a short woman in STEM spotlight, which consisted of a woman in STEM, obviously, with a little description of her along with a video to kind of give more um, visual interest to the presentation. And then I would always end with some type of resource so that that girl can continue learning about that woman outside of the coding camp that would that could be a book a video uh something like that and then thursday again i did like a bigger day of women in stem so we talked more about women in stem we watched a film with four different women in stem um specifically women of color and we also talked about different careers in stem different ways to get started such as volunteer opportunities um other coding camps outside of our own and yeah. On this day, um, they got to work with um, us, but they worked on their own project and they were able to, all of these are different projects that the girls created. And it was really cool to see them tinker with the coding blocks and uh, just walking them through how to critically think about the process of if something doesn't work, how to get it to work. And um, I don't know, I think uh, the whole team was really like proud to see all these projects. Um, so yeah, that was the fifth day. All right, so as far as the overall outcomes of our coding camp, we had seven regular attendees. So this was the same seven people that came all five days, which was awesome. Um, overall, the attendees were much younger than anticipated. So like Cass had said earlier on the website and um, you know where you have to go to sign up for the actual camp, uh, it did state that it was targeted towards uh, girls in eighth to 12th grade, but not everybody who signed up, most likely their parents who signed them up kind of didn't really take note of that and so they did end up being younger which wasn't a huge issue obviously we were happy to have anybody and everybody there but it did require some kind of like last minute adjustments just to make the curriculum more suited for that age group um, but either way we had lots of projects uh, that were created during the camp and shared during the camp which is really awesome whether they pasted the link in the chat or shared their screen and showed us you could tell they were really excited about it and we were very uh happy about it. Um, and yeah, we received a lot of positive feedback at the end, which you can see here on the screen. Yeah, and we're going to pause for a second for you guys to read like one of the quotes. Uh, 
And that's our presentation. Thank you, guys. Any questions? You guys want to learn how to code? Did you want, I don't want to. <laughs> awesome. Oh, yeah. I will say, as like the dad of an eight and 11 year old, uh, like I think having so, like good options of different than Minecraft, which like Minecraft has uh, its positives. And, but like having this is like, I think some of the best, like, you know, like video games or like uh, video like work and kind of like the best sense of the words of like really giving people skills to feel like they're creators, uh, not just kind of taking input input. So I would have loved my kids to have been part of this. Um, all right, let's look here. A uh, whole bunch of like super affirmations here in the chat. So um, very awesome. Fantastic quotes. <laughs> um, is there a sense that Ramsey County Library will continue to offer this? That is a really good question. Um, and maybe Erica or other actual RCO folks can jump in and add to this. Um, but yeah, I think that it's, it's we actually got some feedback um, from parents before this camp, like I personally did. Um, about like them asking for more programming specifically for girls um, and people of color. And so that was very much my intention. And I know I've already talked to the CTAP for next year for Maplewood. Um, and yeah, so I think that it could definitely very much happen. And I would, I would love to see it happen. I've offered to even come back as a consultant to make it happen um, because I genuinely do love this idea, so. Yeah. We had a question from Arian in the in the chat. You know, so when it came to younger students, did you have to make any adjustments? Like, what kind of adjustments did you make to how you present the curriculum? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I would say overall, I don't. I mean, I personally don't ever think it's like a good idea to like talk down to kids just because they're younger. Because I think they understand and they take in a lot more than you might think, and so there was never like adjustments in regards to like how we presented the material in terms of like making it, you know, less in intense, I guess. Like I would say the content was maybe changed to be a little less advanced, but um, we would, I wouldn't say there was like changes in how we necessarily presented the content. It was more about the content itself had to be adjusted a little bit, if that makes sense. Um, but we still wanted them to expose them to kind of more advanced coding languages because again, Scratch is kind of a beginner language and just to be exposed to uh, higher levels, I think is always a good idea just so you know like what's out there and what you could end up, you know, learning in the long run. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I agree with everything Virginia said. And of course, I think it also helped that we banked in time originally um, and ended up adjusting a little bit of our last day as well to leave them plenty of time to like ask questions and for us to help them troubleshoot so that if they weren't getting it, they would get it. Um, I think that was very helpful too. I know Scratch has been around for a while. Uh, do, I mean, does this group feel like it's kind of still the gold standard of teaching coding to kids? Or are you finding that there's a lot of other stuff being developed right now that is kind of I equally would, exciting? I'm sorry, I would say it kind of depends on like what coding language you want to teach. Cause I would say there's like ways to teach other coding languages in like a simpler way where then it gets more advanced. Um, like I've seen that for like Python, for example. So, I mean, Scratch, I think, is an overall great entry point for, like, any coding language. Because the whole point of Scratch, really, is it teaches you concepts that apply to literally any coding language. So I would say yes in that regard, that it is, like, maybe more of a standard if you just want to, like, start teaching coding in general. But there are ways, again, to teach, like, other more advanced languages in a more understandable way to, and then to advance it. So it, it just kind of depends. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. I know one of the things we left them with, especially on Virginia's day was a bunch of resources of how they could continue this learning. Um, and that's why we gave them a scratch book um, that was like scratch projects or whatever um, that like teaches them how to use the software and would inspire them with ideas. Um, and also like books on like Python for kids or things like that, um, I think was also really helpful. I just wanna jump in real quick. Um, yeah, definitely. 
uh, inspires me to uh, work with my own teens at um, my my uh, esports position, and uh, we plan to make a video game, teach them how to make a video game, and uh, teach them like the advances, um, more advanced coding. So, great. Well, super success. Uh, I was this this project like really turned in some awesome work, and I'm sure that this will also this is another project that will continue both at Ramsey County Library and would be used at a lot of our other CTEP sites.